Okay, first part of our review. By the way, first video for the science department. Everybody in the science department say hello. 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 Yeah, yeah. woohoo! Yeah! Science department. The oh. first <laughs> department wide video. Here we go. All right. Now, I'm going to do mass, volume, and weight. And we talked about the song. Mass is not the same as weight. Weight can change. Mass does not. Okay, well, let's talk about that a little bit. Let's start with mass. Mass is the amount of matter an object has. So right here I've got two cubes. Okay, so they look alike. So mass is the amount of matter. We talk about volume being the amount of space they take up. And weight is the amount of gravitational pull. But if you see these two cubes, they look like they're the same size. Well, you're wrong. But they look the same. That's not what we're looking for. They both take up the same space. They both have the same volume. But do they have the same mass? Let's see. Hear that? And watch this. Oh, oh dear. Sure. God. Oh, my dear. <laughs> I think it's safe to say this one has more mass, and I bet it has more weight. So to see the mass, let's take a look at what we have here. What's that called, Miss Camilleri? Triple beam balance. Triple beam balance, that's right. And the unit for mass is grams or kilograms. So let's, let's measure the mass of this block. But I know some of you guys think they're the same size. Well, let's see. First thing with the triple beam balance, you want to make sure it's level. See, it's level right there. And then you don't throw it on you. And then you start to look at these things. You have the hundreds. The tens and the ones. And what's that after the decimal? The tenths? Tenths. Yes. Good. Okay. Let's see. Make sure you lock it in the teeth here. Didn't go anywhere yet. Uh-oh. It went all the way down. Bring it back. And then go down. Too much. Go back. Uh-oh. So right here it goes down and back. We lock it. Make, it, make sure it's in those teeth. Teeth. That's tricky to do from behind the triple beam balance. Dude, I got bad skills. Look at that. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Almost there. Almost there. And we're looking at a mass of approximately, start at hundreds, 100, that's what it's locked in on, 40. That's what that's locked in on, so it's 140. And then we're between 8 and 9, so it looks like 148.6. 148.6 is what What unit? On. What unit, Mr. Uh -huh. Parsea? What is the unit? The unit is grams. 148.6 grams. That is the unit for mass. Okay? So that's pretty massive. Let's take a look at the clear one. Sorry, Ms. Cardick. <laughs> Let's level it out again. Uh -oh. Mr. Parcio, we call that zeroing out the balance in our class. Zeroing out the same balance? Same thing. Same thing, We're leveling tearing. out. You know, I guess you use that on the digital scale. Right? Oh, it looks balanced. Let's put the clear. It's the same size, Mr. Parcio. I'll start at 100. Oh! See that? Too big. Ten. Oh boy. Bring it back to ten. And we are currently at about zero for hundreds. So it's ten, eight, so we're at eighteen. Five. So when you look at the clear one, it's only 18.5 grams. So you're telling me that copper block, which looks just like this, is 148.6 grams. The clear is only 18.5. Wow. So there is less matter that makes up this block, even though they have the same volume. Okay? Mat mass is the amount of matter that an object has. Volume is the amount of space. Okay? So that's the difference there. Now, here's a piece of chalk. 
Would you call that a cylinder anymore? It's kind of distorted. So now we would call that an irregular shape. It's not a total cylinder in here. I'll mess it up even more. That's not a cylinder anymore. So is there a formula to find volume of a weirdo shaped piece of chalk? No. So we have liquid displacement. See, and we need to measure volume. We use milliliters or liters. We have a graduated cylinder. How do I find the volume? Well, I want to drop this in. It's going to push the water aside. And that'll tell us how much space this chalk takes up. So watch this. So I look at the curve, the bottom of the curve. It looks like the button, which is the meniscus. The bottom of the curve is 58 milliliters. So I'm going to say right here, meniscus, 58 milliliters. Drop it in. What do you think will happen? Whoa! The water level went up. And now I'm looking at it like I have oh, a new volume of 61 milliliters. So the liquid level rose. So we have a new meniscus of 61 milliliters. So is the volume of that chalk 61 milliliters? Like some of you would think? No, 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 no. no. Step three. Take the difference. 61 minus 58 is 3 milliliters. Okay, so with liquid displacement, we use it for oddly shaped objects. We look for the difference in what we call the meniscus. Okay? Questions? And then wait real quick. The unit is Newtons. Look at that. Newtons. We use a scale. This is a Newton scale. Oh, wrong way. Thank you, Ms. Antel. <laughs> we use a Newton scale. Okay? And what do you notice? It's going to pull down. Oh, pulls down too much. Pull down. And with this reading, we're seeing how much weight, how much gravitational pull this object requires. And we see that the weight is about 0.5 Newtons. And look here on the back. 45 grams of mass. Look at that. So it pulls down shows the weight. So to review, again, this is very basic, this is our first time doing this, key points, mass is the amount of matter an object has, kilograms or grams, we use the triple beam balance. Volume, use the unit milliliters or centimeters cubed, either one, it's a one to one ratio, we use a graduated cylinder or beaker to measure that out, I know I'm talking fast, I'll slow down. And weight is gravitational pull, you use the unit newtons, not pounds, okay? And that we use a scale. And one last thing, some people say I want to gain weight. Well, when I get a shady maple, which I love to do, I want to eat a lot of food. And the thing you want to think of is, when you go to shady maple, you're going to go gain mass. And when you get more fat, because of that extra mass or matter, you gain weight. You have more gravitational pull. Okay, we talked about liquid displacement. I think we hit the main points. Look at that. All right, now we're going to switch. This is live. We're going to go to Miss Kim Leonard's for a little field trip here. Here we go. Here we go. And I want to take that's the camera. That's How you doing with that? My arms are a little shaky. Uh -oh. It's not too shaky. Don't be nervous. Here we go. Look at this wonderful, dirty classroom. Miss, oh my God, Miss Santel, the lab coat. Oh, Miss Kusevich. Hey, hey, shout out. Hello. Woohoo! Woo yeah. Look at this dump of a classroom. Now let's go to a clean classroom. You know, very organized. Look at this. Now, where do you want me to go, Miss Camilleri? We are live on film. Here we go. Whoa. <gasps> All right. Here we go. So I, oh, you want me to focus on this one first? Do this one first. All right. Okay, where are they? At uh, the top. All right. So now we're going to try and review the difference between atoms, molecules, compounds, and mixtures. And cool. We can talk about pure substances. Oh, nice, Miss Santa. Pure oh my substances gosh. and elements as well. Cool. So our first poster, we have blue dots. Do the colors come through on that? Yeah, we're good. They all look like the same color. All right, Beautiful. So they're all the same color, and they're all individual. Whenever we have individual circles here, this is representing individual atoms. And they're not touching each other. So, if we have one type of atom, Ms. Santel, what would we call that? An element. Look at that, element, yeah. So you're telling me one type of atom in something is called an element, is that correct? That would be an element. So I could have like a pure gold, it would be like atoms of the element gold. 
Would that be safe to say? That would be yes. great. Anything nice. from the periodic table would be considered an element. That's right. So we can have gold. Hey, you. Give me your gold. Hey, you, punk. Give me that gold back. That's right. And each huh. atom wow. here would be one atom of gold. And Sweet. together we could say this is an element. Do you know how many kids screw that up? I know. This is perfect. Look at that. Hopefully it'll make it clear because that is one big weakness every year. Excellent. Now we also said the word pure. <laughs> pure this one type. Pure one type. Mm -hmm. Pure one type. One type of circle that's represented uh, in that whole poster. Perfect. Cool. All right. Okay. Pure one type, atoms of the element, gold, or whatever you want to call it, because it's one type. What else we have here? Draw, why don't you focus in on Mickey Mouse? Mickey Mouse. Here we I go. My hand here. Look at that. So, so right here, now, go ahead. All right. We have. Go ahead, Miss Santel. Well, let me get you in there, Miss Santel. Our Mickey Mouses are all the same. So again, we have a pure substance. But 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 there's two colored circles, but since they're bonded together, it's like one unit. So like each Mickey Mouse is one thing, right? Exactly. Cool. So it's one thing. So this again is a pure substance when we're talking about it. But now what we have is we have a combination. A combination of two or more different types of atoms that are bonded together. Different types. Okay. Notice that they're different. Orange and green. See that? All right. That forms... Compound. Oh. All right, so compound. So it's like a compound Different word. Different types, yes. Different types. Cool. It's so like a driveway or a parkway. Yes. Two more different types of atoms. Yes. Compound. Bonded together. Nice. Okay. Awesome. And we show here that they're bonded together by the circles touching. There you go. And those are chemical bonds. And that's a pure one type substance because all we have in there are H2O molecules, right? Right. We're assuming that's water? This now is one type of substance yeah. and it's going to travel around as a little unit there you all go. together. Now here's the question. Yes, yes. Can this also be a molecule? That's always we get the to question. Sing. Ready? Come uh, together. No, no, bond oh. together. Oh, bond together. I think the go ahead. You're going to sing it. Go ahead. But, okay. Hold on, let me zoom out here. Here we go. Come on, sing. All right. So One. This is, I'm not singing it. Oh, you have to sing it. No. I'm going to cheer. I'm not singing it. Here's an atom, here's an atom, they're moving. Oh boy, because they always have to be moving. They Go ahead. Be Come together. Yeah. Atoms. Molecule. Nice, look at that. Very so good. It also, oh. could be a molecule. Sweet. So it could be, it's a pure substance because it's all the same. Same unit, same, same type unit. of thingy. Yeah. It's a compound. Slash a molecule. molecule. That's awesome. Okay. So it's a pure one type, made of pure, one, just the one type of molecule slash compound. Yes. Awesome. All right. Do we want to make sugar water real quick? No. Okay. Let's do okay. it. Let's and keep going. Done. All right. Dr. Phillips and Mr. DeBack are anxiously awaiting their turn here. You want this one here? Yeah, yeah look at this. we're also showing Barbells. atoms that are bonded by putting a little line. Some things that we look at have little lines there to show that they're bonded together. Mm -hmm. But these are all red circles showing one type of atom again. So again, pure one type. Yeah. Now when they're bonded together, all right, one type of atom, they the form molecule. molecule. Now, here's the question. Is this a compound? <gasps> Is it a compound? Oh. No. It's a compound, you have to have two or more different types of atoms. Because it's the same type, all right, it's a molecule. Perfect. Excellent. Nice. Look at those goggles. My gosh. Beautiful. Next one. All right. Now Hello. Hello. Here all we go. Oh, I'm sorry. Hurt. I almost hurt Miss Kasevich's foot. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All kinds of things that are Whoa. here. This is traveling as a unit. This is traveling as a unit. This is by itself, but none of them are touching together. Okay. This would be. So we got a lot of different stuff there. Mm, I got it. But all together, it would be a mixture. A mixed tumo type. Mixed tumo type. Because there's two or more types of things in there, right? right? Yeah, not a pure one type. But these are not bonded together. They're not okay. touching. So I could take this out. And you'd still have the red red combination. Right. This would, that's what we talk about being uh, physically separated. And, and keeping who they are, like retaining their properties and stuff. Right. And yeah. the ratio, that just means the number of them. Sure. 
It doesn't matter how many of these red ones I have. If I take that one out, it's still that same mixture. That's perfect. Like our fruit salad that we talked about. Or, there you go. Um, sugar water. Perfect. Could be another mixture. Good. So, so over here we talked about, this is an example of a mixture, two or more types of substances together. And this has some molecules, molecules slash compounds and atoms of elements. Here is a pure substance because you got one type of thing. It's only a molecule because it's two or more of the same together. Hold on, we're moving here. Over here is pure one type because it's one type, one atom of the element. I guess we said gold, right? And then over here it's pure again, but it's one type of molecule slash compound. Nice. And that song once again? What's that? How's that song go again? Who's singing it? Really? Yeah, really. <laughs> Come on now. Bond together. Atoms. Molecule. Molecule. Perfect. All right. All right. Very good. Shall we travel to Dr. Phillips' room and see what he has waiting? Here we go. Look at this. Be nice. Beryllium, nitrogen, iodine, cesium. Very nice. Here we go. Whoa. Here we go. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Here's trouble. Here we go. We're live right now. We're live. We were just sitting here talking about solids, okay? And I was, I was just coming up with uh, the idea that the main thing about solids is that even though they're stationary at an uh, atomic level, they're always vibrating just a little bit. If they're cold, a very little bit. And if they're hot, they're, they're vibrating next to each other in and, and that sort of a fashion. All right, so even though things are solid, they're not still at the atomic level. The whole top of the desk is a solid, but there's molecular movement in it. And if you would get it hotter, everything would continue to vibrate just a little more and a little more until it would actually just expand a pinch. But beyond it expanding just a pinch, it would go to another state of matter called a liquid. And in a liquid, you have the same atoms, but now there's so much activity that they can move around each other and flow, go around corners and change their position. So they no longer have a definite shape, though the volume remains the same. And so that's pretty much, uh, you know, the, the beginning of differences in, in solids and, and liquids. Oh, here we go. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. DeBeck. The doctor. Here we go. Now gases, they're the real active phase of matter. Those particles can be described in one sentence that's a little long that has four parts. Gas particles move very fast in straight lines. No evidence that there's a curveball there. They average about 10 diameters apart and they undergo perfectly elastic collisions. Now that means that the distance between gas particles is never constant. While we average 10 diameters apart, they're always moving at very high rates. And guess what? They don't always miss each other. <laughs> they frequently That's collide right. with each other, and they lose no energy in the collision, which means they can stay out of gas as long as the temperature stays up. Can I ask something? And you said elastic. Would that have something to do with them not losing energy? Elastic means something that is very elastic is really defined as changing force or momentum very effectively so none is lost. It's not like with a tennis ball where you drop it and it keeps bouncing to a lower level each time. That's losing some energy. Due to friction to and everything else, we sure. Can't, we can't, haven't seen yet. Yeah. But in, in gases, if they slowed down, they lost energy, they wouldn't stay as gases, they'd go back to liquids. And then they could be uh, put back in, in close proximity to each other. Gases can be compressed. But the atoms in liquids and solids, they can't get any closer together. They're incompressible. Perfect. And do you want to just do the basics of Boyle's Law, Charles Law, and Gailey Sachs Law? Here I have on the board... I'll start on, let me zoom in the Boyle's first. Okay. Go ahead. They all follow the same format, but we just shift the three properties, volume, pressure, and temperature around. Boyle figured out that volume and pressure of a gas are inversely proportional, which means as one goes up, the other goes down. As one goes down, the other goes up. They're always backwards. So, hey, you know what? So we, in my class, we talk about Boyle being a cheerleader, and he does this up and down thing where he says, go PV. There you go. There you go. That's perfect. Good stuff. 
So temperature has to be constant, and the number of gas particles also has to be constant mm -hmm. for that to work. Perfect. Now, we graph that in this direction, and that relationship, inverse, also called indirect, is something you need to remember for things Absolutely. other than the gas laws. Charles' law, Charles was an adventurer. He was a high-altitude balloonist in France in the late 1700s. You know what? It's so funny. I have a picture of him. You Do look you? at him, he looks miserable. He doesn't <laughs> look like a fun kind of guy. I think in those days it was not considered good things to the smile, smile when you yeah. get a picture taken. I'm glad we grew up now when we did. Go ahead. <laughs> he dealt with volume and temperature and found that they were directly related. As the temperature went up, the volume went up. As the mm -hmm. temperature goes down, the volume goes down. And these labels could be switched in mm -hmm. this case. We don't have an, a one only independent, one dependent variable. It can be switched. So volume and temperature are direct related when pressure is held constant. And then we have Gay-Lussac's law. Gay-Lussac's law is the least advertised of the three. He addressed the question of pressure and temperature. In this case, they are directly related when volume and the number of gas particles are constant. Now I have a sample for each one of these, an example that you might find helpful. Boyle's law is the scuba diver's bubble. As the scuba diver exhales at depth, maybe 75 feet, as the bubbles he's watching get nearer the surface, the pressure goes down and the bubble gets bigger in volume. Charles' law is the balloon. You blow up a balloon and stick it in the freezer, and you look <laughs> at it the next one. day, and the balloon is smaller than it was because the volume goes down when the temperature goes down. Take it out, sit it on the desk, and it looks like it's blowing itself up because as the temperature rises, the volume gets bigger. You know what? Some people think when they buy birthday balloons at the dollar store, like in the wintertime, sometimes they go back in the dollar store complaining because when it gets cold outside, they, they kind of deflate or they kind of mm -hmm. shrink a little bit due to they lessen their volume. And I've known people who actually will go back into the dollar store and try to get new balloons, but when they walk in, it's warm again. They yep. re-expand. Re oh, yeah. And Gay-Lussac's law is what I call the aerosol can law. Mm -hmm. Remember that an aerosol can is never empty. It just stops squirting because the pressure inside is the same as the pressure outside. If you uh, increase the temperature, however, on, a, on an aerosol can, you know, bad news, throw it in a fireplace, <laughs> leave it in your car in the summer on a hot afternoon. Do not try that at home. The The... <laughs> temperature goes up and causes the pressure to go up enough so the can may rupture and become a piece of shrapnel. So scuba divers bubble, the balloon, and the aerosol can are all commonly seen examples of these three laws. Now some people like to combine these gas laws in what I call very picky teacher. Everyone oh, yeah. knows that I'm a very picky teacher, so we can remember this. I'm becoming one, too. I'm learning it from you. Go ahead. The I ones like that. are all conditions of volume, pressure, and temperature before a change mm -hmm. takes place, and the twos, volume, pressure, and temperature after a change takes place. But knowing this and knowing what the variables are, you see that Boyle's law is here. Mm -hmm. V1, P1 equals V2, P2. Mm -hmm. Charles' law is here. V1 over T1, V2 over T2. There's the direct relationship. And Gay-Lussac's laws, pressure and temperature, P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So you have all three gas law formulas right there, and they should be fairly easy to separate. So that makes it easy to calculate. So it's like three formulas in one. So that's like a nice little resource to help you memorize those formulas instead of memorizing all three separate. That's really good. I think I'm going to talk about that tomorrow with my kids. See that, guys? All right, I, th I think we're almost about done because I got to get home. <laughs> right. But I think we've done a great job. Dr. Phillips, any more advice at all on, on the test or anything they should think about when they take the test? Any advice, real quick? You got 30 seconds. Nope, just remember those mixtures. Suspensions, you can see different parts mm -hmm. in them, so if they're heterogeneous, colloids like jello have a semi solid form mm -hmm. and a semi liquid form, a gel and a sol. And solutions, you can look right through them. They have no parts. They're homogeneous. Yep. But when you take a solution and warm it up, solid material will dissolve. And when you cool it down, solid material comes out of solution. And maybe you can see this on the bottom of the container. Make sure you guys know separation techniques with mixtures. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Phillips. That was awesome. Have Perfect.